The Rafah crossing into Egypt was briefly opened this morning to allow the first convoy of aid trucks to enter the besieged Gaza Strip. For the latest, I'm joined by CNN's Clarissa Ward in Cairo. Clarissa, when all was said and done, what was actually on those trucks and what is needed but was not provided? So, Michael, on those 20 trucks, you basically had food, water, medicine, all those things desperately needed. But one thing that wasn't on those trucks was fuel. The Israelis have had serious reservations about allowing fuel to go in. They're worried it could be diverted by Hamas. But the U.N. is really concerned that fuel supplies are now down to maybe two or three days. And that fuel is so desperately needed to power generators, which are the only things that are allowing these hospitals to continue to function to the extent that they are still able to function. Also important to note, 20 trucks is nothing in the grand scheme of things. Before this latest spasm of violence, you would have 455 trucks a day, according to the UN, of aid going into Gaza. Now you've had two weeks, relentless bombardment, no aid, mass displacement, humanitarian catastrophe. So 20 trucks, the WFP is saying, could maybe meet the needs of 30,000 people in terms of food, and they need to reach about 900,000. That's why you're hearing full-throated calls from the UN, other humanitarian organizations saying this needs to be a sustained, continuous humanitarian corridor and not a one-off, Michael. Clarissa, big picture, among the reasons for Rafa being such a, a choke point is that at this stage, it's the only perimeter of Gaza not sealed by Israel. True? That's right. The, the, the Rafah border crossing is controlled by the Egyptian side. And the Egyptians have said they also don't want to have a massive outpouring of potentially hundreds of thousands of Palestinians into the Sinai Peninsula, which is where that border crossing is. Egypt has been fighting an insurgency in the Sinai Peninsula for many years now. Egypt already has huge social problems, uh, poverty. And so you've heard Egypt's president say, listen, the answer to this is not us taking a million refugees that we simply can't care for. The answer to this is agreeing upon a sustained, continuous humanitarian corridor, establishing humanitarian zones inside of southern Gaza. We heard Secretary of State Antony Blinken talk about that, too. But the issue is getting all sides to come together and agree on the conditions that would allow for that. And in the meantime, Michael, of course, it sounds like a cliche, but it could not be more true. Every day, every hour is so crucial for the people inside of Gaza who are not only facing relentless bombardment, but what the U.N. is calling an unprecedented humanitarian catastrophe that is unfolding. Clarissa Ward, thank you so much.